Orthostatic Intolerance Video Part 1 The Institute of Medicine has reported that there is sufficient evidence indicating a high prevalence of orthostatic intolerance in ME-CFS, and that orthostatic intolerance is both a common and clinically important finding in this illness. But what exactly is orthostatic intolerance? Orthostatic intolerance, at its core, is a manifestation of a group of heterogeneous clinical conditions in which a constellation of symptoms notably worsen as a result of the sole challenge of upright posture. These symptoms can be prevented by, become ameliorated by, or be reduced by recumbent positioning. When standing upright, gravity shifts 500 to 750 mils of blood into the lower half of the body, resulting in large increases in sympathetic outflow that mediate increases in heart rate and thus cardiac output, as well as peripheral vasoconstriction to once again shift this volume back to the brain and other visceral organs. When this process is perturbed or does not function efficiently, symptoms of orthostatic intolerance may manifest. Among those with ME-CFS, exacerbation of overall fatigue and function has been reported with upright stressors such as physical exertion, hot showers, prolonged standing, warm environments, and after lightheaded episodes. Validated NBAC task testing has observed pronounced cognitive delays, increase in testing errors, and decrements in memory, concentration, and information processing that directly correlate with the degree of tilt upon formal tilt table testing. Additionally, invasive cardiopulmonary exercise testing using pulmonary artery catheters during upright exercise challenge has detected impaired tissue oxygen uptake, or impaired VO2 max, in those with ME-CFS. This impairment in VO2 max has been traced to low right atrial filling pressures, leading to impaired cardiac output as a result of cardiac preload failure. Lower right atrial filling pressures were found to be directly correlated with greater impairments in VO2 max measurements. Furthermore, administration of a normal saline bolus in these patients leads to both improvements in cardiac output and VO2 max. At its core, upright positioning appears to increase venous pooling in the setting of decreased compensatory vasoconstriction in those with dysautonomia related to ME-CFS, resulting in decreased cerebral blood flow and a compensatory increase in sympathetic nervous system response. Inadequate cerebral blood flow has been associated with lightheadedness, blurred vision, diminished concentration, exercise intolerance, fatigue, syncope, and unusual neurological symptoms. The resulting catecholamine surge from decreased cerebral blood flow, furthermore, often leads to additional peripheral cardiovascular symptoms including palpitations, dyspnea, facial pallor, cold hands and feet, sweating, anxiety, chest or abdominal discomfort, tremor, and nocturia. Further complicating assessment of these clinical findings is the fact that the persistence of symptoms resulting from upright positioning can be prolonged thus temporarily removing the symptoms of orthostatic intolerance from their initial triggering event. In some cases, these symptoms can last for several days after a severe insult. How then, with this degree of symptomatic heterogeneity, can we objectively measure orthostatic intolerance? Perhaps the most simple yet functional bedside tool available to clinicians is the measurement of hours of upright activity, defined as the number of hours spent with the feet on the floor. Healthy individuals will usually spend approximately 14 to 17 hours of upright activity in a 24-hour period, while those with fibromyalgia or chronic illnesses such as heart failure or COPD will usually spend 10 to 12 hours upright. Strikingly, in comparison, those with ME-CFS will often spend as little as zero and up to eight hours upright within a 24-hour period. Simply asking patients about their hours of upright activity can be incredibly enlightening. Another exceptional in-office tool for identifying remarkable cardiovascular compensatory responses to an orthostatic challenge is the 10-minute NASA Lean test. This test is performed by measuring baseline heart rate and blood pressure values at rest in a supine position. Patients are then asked to stand on the floor with their feet approximately 12 inches from the wall while leaning back against the wall with their scapulae. It is in this position that heart rate and blood pressure values are again measured sequentially each minute for a total of 10 minutes. In fact, 10-minute NASA lean testing appears to be more sensitive for detecting circulatory physiological responses than formal tilt table testing in those with ME-CFS. It is critical to remember that a full 10-minute test is required to achieve this sensitivity. A significant portion of those meeting criteria for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome will not be detected if this test is concluded early. In this test, 
the challenge of standing elicited multiple compensatory cardiovascular responses, including a rise in heart rate, as well as a very notable decrease in pulse pressure, the difference between systolic and diastolic pressures, primarily as a result of rapidly rising diastolic pressure. This test was ultimately aborted due to impending syncope. During the test, a remarkable degree of dependent acrocyanosis as a result of venous pooling was noted in the lower extremities. This concludes part one.